Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and over the last few days I've been in New York for the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus press event. Now, if you guys want to know how these press events work, you get invited, you go, you get a hotel room, and I got a really small pod hotel room. I don't recommend it. It's like a ship cabin, but even smaller. So you go to the event, you get to meet lots of people, you look at all the devices and things, and then just when you've gotten used to all the craziness, you travel back home. So now let's take a look at the Galaxy Note 5. Let's look around the device. It looks pretty much like the Galaxy S6 does. Samsung has now adopted this type of appearance. On the left-hand side, we have the two volume rockers looking very much like the S6. On the front, we have our five megapixel camera sensor. On the bottom, we have our capacitive buttons and also the fingerprint sensor. On the right side, we have our power button. One of the most notable things about the Galaxy Note 5 is that curved back. It's supposed to be more easy to use one-handed, Samsung claims. Now here is the Galaxy S6. You can see that the cameras look very similar, actually both 16 megapixel sensors. I don't know if there's going to be a discrepancy between Sony and ISOCELL sensors used. We will find that out soon. So now looking at the bottom here, you can see that the layout is very, very similar. We even have the speaker being on the bottom the same. The Galaxy Note 5 does still look quite similar in terms of layout to the Galaxy Note 4. We have our button placements in the same place. One of the biggest distinguishing things, of course, is going to be the materials used, glass on the front and back, and also that it's not as wide as the Galaxy Note 4. It actually feels significantly less wide, plus that curve makes it feel less wide when you're holding it in the hand, so I do have to commend them on that. What I sadly notice as missing on the top is the infrared blaster. It has now been taken away entirely. I am, however, glad that this is very, very well built. Feels very weighty, very substantial. It's 171 grams versus the 176 of the Galaxy Note 4, so it is a little bit lighter. Now, the biggest slap in the face to the Note fans is that it doesn't have a removable battery anymore. It doesn't have an SD card slot. I'm not actually someone who would interchange batteries, and I didn't really use an SD card, but I still can't help feel betrayed that this no longer feels like a power user phone, but rather a larger S6 that happens to have a stylus. And I don't know if a lot of people are going to be using this stylus. It feels as though there might not really be a reason to update from the Galaxy Note 4, which at this point is at a lower price due to the new one coming out. If you're somebody who really needs a removable battery and SD card slot and you don't want to have a glass back, I would just stick with the Galaxy Note 4. I was easily able to get an inductive charging adapter for my Galaxy Note 4 battery so I can set it on a pad and it will charge with inductive charging. Now I know that Samsung brags with their new inductive charging on the Galaxy Note 5 that it can charge from 0 to 100% in 2 hours. So it's faster wireless charging, but it doesn't make up for the fact that we have lost our ability to take out the battery and also doesn't make up for the fact that we have a smaller battery in here. Yes, that's right. This is a 3000 milliamp hour battery. Now it's hard to say in the real world how long this battery is going to last, but this does have the same SOC, same frequencies as the S6, also has a larger display, so I'm assuming we're going to get somewhere around what the Galaxy S6 gets. With a battery this size, the only thing that keeps me from running away screaming is that it should have the adaptive fast charging like the Galaxy S6 and be able to charge very quickly when you plug it in. Now, I don't want to be too much of a negative Nancy, and I do have to say that this is a really nice device. It's just not all that we hoped it would add up to, but it does have that S Pen, and it is so ever nice and clicky. The click is satisfying, and I can only imagine becoming a little bit obsessed with pushing it in and out. So I think that the mechanism is ingenious. It just pops out kind of like a ballpoint pen and you can pull on the little nub. Samsung did create another feature that I feel like I'm going to get quite obsessed with. So when you pop out the pen, the display turns on, but it's still black. It's mostly off, quote unquote, but you can make these notes right on the display with the display off by simply pulling out the pen. And by the way, this pen is more responsive. It feels a lot more fluid. There isn't a lot of delay. So really great job there on the pen. So now when you're satisfied with your little doodles, you can push the pen back in, the display turns off and it saves the action memo automatically for you. So that's really, really nice. You don't have to hit save yourself. It will save it automatically. So now when the display is on, when you remove the pen, we are met with our common set of error command features, action memo, smart select, screen write, S note, and add shortcuts. 
What's really nice about adding shortcuts is that you can add three of whatever apps of your choice so that you can, well, access them by shortcut. So the next time you activate Air Command, there you have those apps waiting for you. Another really nice thing is that if you go underneath the settings here, you can see we are met with floating icon. So you can have the Air Command menu selectable at all times. You then can arrange that floating icon to appear wherever you'd like it to once you pull that pen out. Now the most notable change of the air commands that I can show is underneath screen write. So when you tap on screen write, you now have the ability to select an entire page. So hit scroll capture. And once you do that, you're going to be presented with capture more. So if you hit capture more and you hit capture more until it goes all the way down to the bottom of the page, you will have selected the entire screen. So you don't have to do screenshot by screenshot. You can now save an entire page for you to look through. You can write on it, or you can simply scroll down to the bottom. So I think that this is pretty nifty. And then of course they give you options for the S Pen menu. This is really nice because even though they downsized TouchWiz as a whole, they still give you full access to this S Pen menu. I'm glad because it might drive some people bonkers if they don't want that screen off memo thing. Every time you pull out the pen, it allows you to write a note and it saves it. You can turn that off. You can turn off S Pen alerts. You can turn off S Pen detection. You have just complete full access to everything on here. So that is really nice. So now let's talk about the display a little bit. This is a Quad HD display, 5.7 inches. It's Super AMOLED, so it is still the pen tile, but you can't see it. Seriously, it looks great. We still have all our display modes. Basic mode, which looks the most natural. AMOLED photo, which gives you wide gamut. AMOLED cinema, which makes it really, really punchy. I can't wait to look at the calibration from a couple of samples and see what's going on, but it looks like it's calibrated like the Galaxy S6, and I was pretty happy with that. Now when looking at the S6 Edge Plus and the Note 5, I can see that the pixel density is not as dense as what we have on the Galaxy S6 or the regular size of the Edge. The difference is 577, about that on the regular S6 and Edge, and about 518 pixels per inch on both this S6 Edge and also the Note 5. For the Eagle Eye, you can tell a minute difference in sharpness, but you can't tell that either of them are a diamond pixel matrix. Another thing that I have to commend Samsung on is the one-handed operation. They have improved the reduced screen size. So before you would have to swipe your thumb awkwardly across the display to get the window to be smaller so that you can use it one-handed. But these days, all you have to do is to triple click the home button and it's going to downsize the entire display for you. Then you are free to use the phone as normally. You can choose to go left or then you can choose to go right. Just depends on your handedness. And then when you are done with using the screen at that size, you can hit return to full screen. Then just as some miscellaneous software features, we have the ability to open pop-up window. So we can have up to five applications open at one time. You can move them about. This makes for some pretty great multitasking, although I have to wonder with that four gigabytes of RAM, if that is now enough to deal with the RAM management issue that we've been seeing on the Galaxy S6. Anyhow. Just like with the Galaxy S6, we have the theming options, which I have really enjoyed. It really does feel that I have a personalized phone, so that is now brought to the Note. We've still got the double-click feature of the home button to access the camera. It's still nice and zippy. This phone feels just as fast as the Galaxy S6 does. Well, not surprising, it's got the same SoC. We do have one new camera feature though. It's called Live Broadcast. Everything else looks the same though. It's a periscope type of a clone thing that is powered by YouTube. So you can live broadcast to YouTube. I'm gonna have to test that out and see how I like it. But now that's an option. As far as some accessories, we do have this keyboard case type thing. So you can pop the keyboard off and put it on and use it to type on. So when you look at the back here, there are no nubs and there is no connection to Bluetooth. It's simply just a capacitive film that allows you to type. Now just realize it's not battery powered, so there's no backlight. The keys feel okay, but the appearance is a little bit archaic and gaudy. So now let's take a look at the colors that we have available right now, at least the ones that it comes in now. Now, unfortunately, it looks like we're only getting two of the colors stateside. That would be the pearl white and the black sapphire. I don't know when we're going to be seeing the other stateside or if we're going to see them at all. So here's the sapphire black and also the platinum gold. The platinum gold one looks just kind of cheapish to me, like weird chrome. I've never been able to bond with that particular color. And here we have the pearl white and the titanium silver. 
I do like the titanium silver. I think it's the one that I would go for if I did not have the black one available. So my favorite colors in terms of best to worst go as the black, the titanium silver, then the white, and then the gold one. Absolutely, that would be the, my last choice, the gold one. So I'm curious, which colors do you like? You should just let me know in the comment section below. I tend to really like this silvery looking one, although it really does look like a kitchen appliance, much like my M8 device that I affectionately called Chef Gordon Ramsay. This would be Chef Gordon Ramsay the second. So next up, I am taking a bit of a look at the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. Stay tuned for that. I'm going to be editing this one after this video. So let me know what you think about the Galaxy Note 5, everybody. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Both of these guys are going to be available the 21st of August, so that's coming up real soon. Tell me in the comment section below, yay or nay, which one you would go for. Have a good night, you guys.